Welcome to No Apologies with Becker on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I am your host, Rick Becker, our wonderful co-host, Lori Hintz. You're very kind. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a very interesting show tonight. Well, it's, you know, we're all about education here. <laughs> we really are. We want to teach people things. And so tonight we're going to start by what I call Bastia de Decoded. And I say that because a lot of people who hear this phrase about this caucus in the North Dakota legislature really don't know much about Bastia, except they, they know that it's bad. So that's all, <laughs> no, that's all we know. We just know it's bad. So um, because of that, I thought it might be a good idea to just actually explain the background and the person himself. It's named right. after a human being. It is indeed. <laughs> so yeah, so the background is that uh, when I was in the legislature back at my first session, 2013, um, I was realizing that the, the people that wanted to most closely adhere to a limited government, uh, liberty, conservative principles were not really organized. And um, so, so I, I, I formed a caucus. Caucus is just a group of legislators. Uh, you get together, you discuss bills, you do whatever it is, and, uh, and, and that's all it is. It's a very loose term. Uh, I decided to name it Bastia Caucus because I wanted to pick something that was uh, non, uh, there's no conflict. Nobody could, in theory, in theory, <laughs> oh, have how'd a that problem work out for you, Yeah, not so yeah. much. <laughs> so in theory, there's nothing, you know, who, who nobody, nobody dislikes Bastia because most people don't know about him. So I picked Bastia. Here's the thing. For people that like to nerd out on, on reading history and liberty political science, Frederick Bastia, he was born in 1801. Brilliant, brilliant guy. He has a, a one of his, I guess, his most famous book. It's a booklet, really. It's very, very easy read. It's called The Law. Okay. And in it, he he makes it very, very clear why limited government is important, why crony capitalism, or uh, in other words, corporate welfare, is something to be uh, uh, done away with at all costs, why free trade is important, why socialism is bad. I mean, he hit all these things that are timeless. And so I thought, perfect, we're gonna, we're gonna hit on him because it, it's, it, should be, it should be something that doesn't bother anybody and it harkens back to something that has a little bit of an intellectual component to it, an economic component to it. And so the caucus was made. Now, his real first name is Claude Frederick Bastia. And I, looked, <laughs> and I looked him up because I thought it was interesting. I would do a, just a little bit of reading. I mean, he has some sort of a little parable that is very, very interesting to me. And I thought that was fabulous once I read it because it's so simple. Yes. At the Candlemaker's Petition, is that no, what you're talking no, about? No, I'm no, actually talking about the one. window one. I'm oh, talking yeah. about the broken window. Yes. So he has a little story about a broken window, and what he basically says in this parable, if you will, is that if you have a window and it's broken, that there other things are going to happen because of it. It's not just going to be just a broken window. There's going to be ancillary things. There's going to mm -hmm. be collateral things that happen. I just thought it was really interesting that he chose something as simple as, as a kid throwing a right. rock through a window to make a point. And, right. What, what he does with that parable is to explain something that we see commonly today where people say, um, you know, if, if you just make work, or if there's destruction, or whatever it is, if you the shovel-ready jobs, right. just make work, right. that that's better for the economy. What, he, what, what Bastia pointed out is that you can employ the resources to fix the window, mm -hmm. and absolutely some people are better off, the people that fix broken windows might be They'll better off. They'll make money. Right. But society as a whole is no better off at all. They're back to where they were from square one, and the money that was spent to pay the person to fix the broken window that would have gone to something else to improve society never got there. He pointed that out. Another, I'm glad you brought that up. I just thought it was just very interesting because it, it resonated with me in that it makes sense that something as simple as that can have other unintended consequences. And that's the bottom line with Bastia, I think, is unintended consequences. You can have all of the best, you know, plans in the world, but if you don't look at the big picture of the other things that are going to happen when you make that decision, then... Yep. Yeah. He had another one that's famous. I, that's what I thought maybe you were referring to. It's mm -hmm. called the Petition of the candle, Candlestick Makers. And uh, at, for that one, he's saying it tongue-in-cheek, but what he's pointing out is 
the problem with special interests uh, asking government for subsidies or favors or whatever it might be. Right. And he points out to the, the people that make candles on how uh, daylight is cutting in to their to, profits, to their profits <laughs> and that the sun is actually unfair competition. <laughs> and, they w and, and that the candlestick makers were imploring the government to put mandates in place that people had to shutter their windows at a certain hour to increase the need for their product. And, and the sales of candles. Right. That's so he was fabulous. saying tongue in cheek, but again, everything he talks about back in the mid 1800s is applicable today. So that is who Bastiat is, and your caucus in the legislature is just right. a group of people who get together and talk about, right. and that's it. So people, I think that's the decoding right there that, that you need to know, is that it's basically just a group of people who are like-minded, mm -hmm. I'm assuming. Uh, you probably have within your caucus plenty of different- Oh, we do. We absolutely do. So, so the thing, what's so interesting is that the people that are most bothered by the Bastiat Caucus, the mere existence of the Bastiat Caucus, are Republicans that don't like that there's this, this group of people that sort of separate themselves. And our intent is not to separate ourselves. Our intent is, to, I mean, because everyone's welcome. Right. They're all welcome. They're all welcome to come together. We've had speakers. We talk about things. So the, the point is our actual mission, if you will, is to follow the Republican platform, which includes things like personal responsibility, limited government, lower taxes, quality education, legislative integrity. Exactly. We, that's, that's what we're about. And it's so ironic because we're about exactly what the Republican platform is. The thing is though that we're more stringent. We want to follow it because we think that by trying to give ourselves excuses to not follow it is where people go astray and get into trouble and do something less optimal for the state like rapidly grow spending. So we stick to that and that we find other people find that very bothersome. We we there's a tendency to want to ostracize us. There's a, there's Why, a, though, I, you would think if you're following the platform that that would be exactly what you would want as a party. Because so. a lot of people don't want you to follow the platform. They want you to fall in line and follow the, you know, get in line, uh, do your part. We have a hierarchy here. There's a power structure here. This isn't how you play the game. And how dare you think that you're going to play by rules different than what we're set. And so uh, there's a radio talk show host in Fargo. Oh, he just he just goes endless. He says we're not real Republicans. It, they they call us libertarians, which is fine. Reagan actually said there's there's really not a difference between a conservative and a libertarian. You know, we can get in the nuances of that. Sure. But the point is, we are adhering faithfully to the Republican platform, and people are calling us out, saying we're not real Republicans. We want to divide the Republican Party. It's the craziest thing. Doug Burgum, his pack that we talked about before, where he put millions of dollars of his personal money into this PAC, Political Action Committee, to take out conservative legislators this last June. One of them was Jeff Magrum, uh, in just south and, and uh, east of Bismarck. Right. They put out a full page ad. This PAC did? This PAC did, uh, which made fun of the Bastiat Caucus, <gasps> calling us uh, French libertarian extremists. So what they're doing is they're relying on people to not know, and they're, they're, they're preying on their lack of knowledge about this. They're basically treating the constituents in District 28 like fools and, and using these names. So it's, it's just the, it's the most ironic thing. Well, I thought it would be a good idea to just explain to people who he actually was and oh, what... he was fantastic. Yes. Yeah, he and really was. His writings was. were just just very plain and easy to understand. If you have a chance, read the law. It's, an, it's, it's very short. I mean, all of these older readings aren't necessarily super fun, but I mean, you'll get through it in, in a short period of time. I gave a copy, I give lots of copies of the law out. I remember I gave a copy out to the page, I think it was in 2013, next to me, it was actually Reed Christensen. Oh, fun. Uh -huh. Who was the most recent chair of uh, Young Republicans and now is moving on to bigger and better things. but. Uh, it's a, it's a very influential book, and I strongly encourage people to read it. So yeah, Bastia, Bastia. Really I just good thought guy. it would be a good idea to explain that too. And you know, it's kind of it's kind of hard to pronounce a little bit because it's a French name, but it's spelled so you know, B A S T I A T, and then the T, the final T is kind of soft, kind of Bastia.
Yeah, I go back and forth with the T. I don't, you know, <laughs> I, I don't speak friends. This no, is nor, friends. Do this no, is nor do I. Nor do I. But I do, I do like explaining this to people because I think there is just a lot of misinformation out there. As you said, if, if they're putting ads out there that are calling you something that the, the group is not. And if you are a group, what do caucuses actually do besides just get together? To, I mean, if you have a primary caucus, it's just people just getting together, is it not? I mean, yeah, there, there, and the, and the in the U.S. For, uh, Congress, for instance, there's Black Caucus, Women's Caucus, Gun Caucus, Freedom Caucus. There's, it's just a group of people, and and you may very well within your group try to promote why one bill is good and mm -hmm. and all of that. We in the Bastiats, we don't, we don't. Uh, require or even ask that people vote a certain way, but we do strongly encourage debate to bring about why it is that you would vote one way versus another way. Is it, is it a uh, common every week thing? How often do you get together during session usually? It, it has been uh, every week in the past, uh, and, and like I said, we've brought in wonderful speakers. Uh, Larry Reed from uh, Foundation for Economic Education, a brilliant, brilliant person. We brought in national speakers. I'm not sure, I'm not, uh, I was the chair for the first couple rounds, mm -hmm. uh, the last two sessions. I haven't been chair, I haven't been the leader. The media frequently still says that. Um, I'm hoping that we continue as a group. Mm -hmm. There has been so much pressure and so much negativity right. that I am I am concerned a lot of the Bastia members, the legislative members, are wanting to pull back because they're being ridiculed. And one of the tactics, by the way, that's employed is they like to say uh, that the, like they'll point out a certain Bastia member and they'll say a disciple of Rick Becker. Oh, honestly. So they're playing the, they're playing the mind games because nobody wants to be a disciple of someone. Certainly right. the people that come to Bastia Caucus are very strong individual thinkers. Independent. And they, and independent thinkers, they don't want to be someone's disciple or someone's, you know, that, that they don't have a mind of their own. So some of this is a psychological warfare. We'll see, I hope it, that it's not working successfully. I think, in fact, I uh, pulled up, there have been several quotes um, and, uh, Bastia, oh, yeah, April 25th, 2017, I pulled up a quote. Bastia's in the news a lot, and it gets more, more commonly in the news. I've seen it recently in, on in, Facebook posts, even. Right. I've seen it. In mm -hmm. 2017, this was in the Grand Forks Herald, uh, it says, the first conclusion is that the legislature has taken a significant turn to the right. This is apparent in a number of ways, but potentially the most important is the emergence of the Bastia caucus. That's in 2017. Wow. And then very recently, in October of 2020, the Bastia Caucus, a group of right-leaning members of the House of Representatives, despite the unfamiliar name, the caucus has had an impact in state politics. Well, that's great. So we're having an impact. Mm -hmm. We just need to stick with it. We need to ignore the people that want to uh, uh, try and, and you know just convince people that we're something that we're not. What we are is limited government, high liberty-minded people that want to do whatever we can. We do it in the name of the Republican Party based on the Republican platform. On the platform, which is, you know, blueprint. Well, I'm, gl I'm glad you suggested this topic. This was a good one. I got to air it out. Well, I just, I just thought, you know, it would be a good idea to let people know what it actually is because I don't think people actually realize or understand. Yeah. So, so uh, next we will do a little Rick's rant. Yeah. Are you ready? And it's not so much of a rant. I have an announcement. <laughs> I'm excited about the announcement. I've got an announcement that regards law enforcement. You're going to be so intrigued at this. Come right back. We'll be here with you. Hi, folks. It's the Canline Cafe. I reckon it's time you'll do for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline Burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a con roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink for trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Beck Communications is honored to be recently recognized with three Broadband Now Awards. 
Beck Communications Cooperative was awarded in the categories of top internet speeds nationwide, top three fastest internet providers in North Dakota, and North Dakota's number one fastest fiber provider. It's only through the support of our members and customers that Beck Fiber delivers award-winning speeds and service. Thank you, Beck Communications Cooperative members and customers for your years of continued support. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Is your business phone system outdated and expensive to maintain? Most large VoIP companies leave you on hold or struggling through online support and training for your employees. With Beck Connect, you always have fast, friendly, local support. Familiar faces with the know-how to keep you connected. Take advantage of the newest technology and voice calling, video conferencing, and virtual meeting rooms. Beck Connect gives you all the features you need with no upfront investment and no obsolete hardware or software ever again. Simplify your communications. Choose local. Choose Beck Connect. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. Now. This isn't really a rant, you're right. This I'm isn't much of a rant. It's more of a, just an, an announcement and yeah. letting people know what's going on. And uh, before you say an, anything else about this, I'm gonna give a little preface and I'm okay. gonna say that I think it's always a good idea to reward good behavior versus punishing bad behavior. And Josh Gallian just proved that this week because he put out an auditor's report with Devil's Lake, which had such a good record that he decided to reward them for that good behavior, if you will, right. and incentivize other people. Now, that's a, it's a much more motivating thing to motivate people with positive rather than punishment. More carrots, less sticks. Exactly. Yes. So, yeah, the announcement is the establishment of the Liberty and Prosperity Guild. So this is something I, I actually set up back in, I think it was June or July of 2019. Um, but then life got busy, I put it on the back burner and now I'm bringing it out again. What the Liberty and Prosperity Guild is, is a nonprofit, it's a 501c4. Okay, as opposed to C3, which means, what's the difference? Well, if you donate, you, it's not tax deductible. Okay, got it. So you can't do it for tax deductions, you just have to do it out of the goodness of your heart. <laughs> which is a, but it's a great idea. Yeah, so what we're looking to do, now it may do other things in the future, but right now this guild is going to be focused on providing an award to law enforcement. The award, uh, we're hoping, we're anticipating, will be a $10,000 award. Excellent. Various law enforcement agencies, sheriff's departments, police departments, are going to be nominated. It can be nominated by anyone. Someone within the department could be uh, your average citizen. But what we want are nominees who have done something or said something or had a policy which best exemplifies an approach to law enforcement that respects and adheres to the Constitution. And I, I think that's critically important. It is. Because we need to back the blue, but we also need to understand the, like what we're all about, the proper role of government. Right. And what occurred to me, the reason it was in June of 2019 is that during the, uh, I think the 17 and 19 sessions, there were some interesting bills that came up. There was a red flag law, which would have put severe restrictions uh, for gun ownership. And what I saw was, for instance, departments coming out of Fargo and West Fargo that were very much in favor of gun restrictions, which in my opinion, in most people's opinion, is not following the Constitution. And we juxtapose that with what was going on in Colorado, for instance. Most of the sheriffs in the entire state 
were saying that they are not going to follow a gun ban. Right. And they stood up for the Constitution more than for what a governor or what a state, state legislature was saying when they were contradicting the Constitution. And it, I, it occurred to me, what, what an interesting differing of opinion of, of how one might view law enforcement. It just came to mind with all of the mask mandates with the individual municipalities when it mm -hmm. was down to the individual counties like that. And how many videos did we see by sheriff's departments and they were talking about how they were going to enforce mandates and things like that and all over the state and wide variety all over North yeah, Dakota too. Yeah, there was too. a very wide variety. Right. Right. So I think what, I, what I'd like to see is that the the sheriff's departments and police departments that are not afraid to stand for the oath that they took to uphold and respect the Constitution are rewarded for that. Great. And, and so it's something, the, the award, again, hopefully we will be looking at a $10,000 annual award to the, the uh, person who best exemplifies it, to the department that best exemplifies it, and they can spend it how they want. So people can look on the screen now and they can see the Facebook page. So you can join yeah. the Facebook page and ostensibly you're going to put information about how you can donate and things yes, there. Yes, there. There, there, there will be a, don't. this is brand spanking new, there will be a <laughs> donate button on there. We're going to have a GoFundMe page and, and I would ask that you donate whatever you can. If you believe in this concept of, of respecting and appreciating law enforcement and doing it especially within the context of respecting the Constitution, then you're with me 100%. I ask you to donate. Let's get, let's, let's get this big award, this big prize for, the, for a department and that does that. I think what that department could do with those monies too, that is, that's very exciting. I mean, it, it could be for a piece of equipment right. that they really want. For all I care, it could be for a cappuccino machine. <laughs> right. no, really, I mean, why not? It, it can, it's entirely for whatever they want to use because we do respect law enforcement and, and we want to continue showing them the utmost respect, but they absolutely uh, like all of us need to respect the Constitution. Well, it's so an this is opportunity to reward great behavior and that's that's always going to be so much more motivating than punishing them for yeah. that too. And I'm I'm hoping that the various law enforcement agencies around the state, you know, view this as a positive thing. I don't know how you could view it otherwise, but essentially what it is the citizens of North Dakota donating their hard-earned dollars to say we want to show you our appreciation for the work you do and the respect you show the Constitution. Well, I can tell you that during the No Dapple protests, it was very, very apparent to me how much we in this community absolutely love our law enforcement because I personally spent a lot of time on the bridges waving flags and, and making sure I was going to the Capitol for yeah. a Back the Blue, um, you know, various rallies and things like that because we do, we love it. I actually have on the back of my car, Back the Blue. It's actually on the back of my car because I am so grateful for our law enforcement. So many times during that, it was apparent how important it is to have good law enforcement. This is like the best segue ever to the next segment. <laughs> so we'll be talking about police again. We're so. gonna talking about police, but, <laughs> but from a different perspective, not, not, uh, yeah, not necessarily a good perspective, but, <laughs> but you're right, we, we, uh, I, I, we want to show our appreciation, as we've said, um, and I think we can do it within the confines of the Constitution. And that's why it's okay to be against things like sobriety checkpoints and civil asset forfeiture and warrant uh, or knockless warrants, things like that. And it's not opposed to law enforcement. No. It's not opposing law enforcement at all. It's just simply trying to make sure everyone's on the same page and respecting the Constitution. That's, that's what this word, award is about. And so, again, Consider donating, take a look at the Facebook page, things will come up, spread it around, share it. Let's get that award up to 10 grand. I'd like to be able to give it in January already, wow, if possible. Wow, let's go. We gotta get yes. moving him. All right, next up, we're going to be talking about police, but a little different tack. Minneapolis, yes. join us. We'll be right back. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas. 
The Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. Beck Communications is honored to be recently recognized with three Broadband Now Awards. Beck Communications Cooperative was awarded in the categories of Top Internet Speeds Nationwide, Top 3 Fastest Internet Providers in North Dakota, and North Dakota's number one fastest fiber provider. It's only through the support of our members and customers that Beck Fiber delivers award-winning speeds and service. Thank you, Beck Communications Cooperative members and customers for your years of continued support. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Who do you trust with your digital life? Not all cloud backup providers keep your data truly private. Beck Cloud Backup uses advanced multi-layer encryption to keep your family photos, videos, and sensitive business documents secure and only for your eyes. Your Beck Lightband Internet service already includes 50 gigs of free storage to keep your digital life safe and secure. Call us at 701-475-2361 to start using your Beck Cloud Backup today. Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel, and our 10-inch Gentle Night Model has a quilted top, giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck, your after hours oasis of sanity. I am your host, Rick Becker, our lovely co-host, Lori Hintz. Thank you very much. Uh, we are about to talk about Police again. Yes. Minneapolis. Now, I want to clarify, I gave the thumbs down when I said Minneapolis, but I happen to love Minneapolis. Well, and I have, you know, spent a lot of time there myself. That's, I don't know that I would any longer. That's where I found my wife. I don't know how I oh, couldn't. Oh, that's love it. great. Yes. Well, I, She's I, just I, sitting there looking for a home. <laughs> he just found her there. Yeah. Sorry, Annie. But okay. the, <laughs> problem, the, problem, the thumbs down is about the city council. And it's about what's going on with BLM and all the defund the police crap. What a mess. What a just, huge pile of mess. It is, and, and I honestly have not been back since all of the destruction, and there's a reason for that. I don't yep. think I'm alone in that. I think there's a lot of people who are, have a little trepidation in going to their areas that they used to mm -hmm. frequent in Minneapolis now. Yep. That's and my, really my sad. My daughter lives there, oh, and wow. I went down to visit her uh, not very long after all the riots, and Wow, that is a different place now. It's 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 very very sad for someone who used to enjoy really going there and visiting and and uh, checking out the sites and going out eating, drinking, etc. It's a lovely city, really. I mean, it's a sad. It, yeah, thing. I think back to Mary Tyler Moore times, or you know, and what it was like when I was younger too, because I spent some time growing up in Minnesota too. So I, um, you know, got to go to Duluth and got to go to Minneapolis, and it's not the same anymore. And it's, no. it's ruined, actually, in many ways. It's just, just they've, they've ruined it. They, those, them, um, those people who decided to do perpetrate destruction all over the city in yeah. response to, I'm skeptical of that, too, the uh, George Floyd killing. Yeah. Well, and, and it was and the response that the city had and the state had with regard to the riots. They were not peaceful protests, obviously. Um, but what I find interesting 
probably more than anything else, is that there was this outcry because the Floyd thing happened in Minneapolis. Right. Okay. There was this outcry about systemic racism. Now, the city council is super diverse, aren't they? Well, they're very diverse. They have they they they're gender diverse. They they have two transgender people on. Uh, they have, I think, at least four African Americans on. They're they're very diverse. They're not diverse in political ideology. They are 100% Democrat. Wow. The mayor is Democrat. And the police chief is Democrat. So what you have is an entirely Democrat situation, and yet there's systemic racism. Now, why? That is When the Democrats try to own the mantle of diversity and inclusion and eradication of racism, why in their system? Because the mayor in Minneapolis has not been a Republican for 59 years. 61? <laughs> yes, since 1961, apparently except for one day when there was a Republican mayor for one day. I don't know the details. But the, but the point is that it's been under Democrat control for about 60 years. Right. Why do we have a city that has systemic racism so bad that it warrants and, and, and sets off Unless a string of riots throughout the country? Unless, I'm just putting this out there, there is not systemic racism there, and it's a narrative and not the truth. Well, and I agree with that 100%, <laughs> but, the, but, but they're declaring. Right. You know, so you and I, so, so we're up here, we're saying, yeah, that's baloney, mm -hmm. there's other stuff going on, but they are saying it's because of systemic racism. So, so then I say, okay, you know what, I'm going to pull away from my theory. Let's talk about your theory of systemic racism. Why, good sir? After 60, year, 60 years of Democrat rule, why is there systemic racism in your city, in your police department? Pray tell. Why is that? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> I don't know that anybody's going to answer that. They're too busy torching things and breaking windows. Right. So the response, the re yeah, there, there we have some good videos. So the response in the wisdom of this city council to all of this destruction and criminality going on in their city, this their just response kills, this just kills me. is to say, you know what? You know what? We need fewer <laughs> police officers. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. We President Trump has said how many times? It's like, if they would have just asked me a little earlier, I would have been in with the National Guard. And it was foolhardy and ridiculous and so destructive. And now they want to get rid of the exact people that they need. Then how about all the other things that have gone on in addition to the destruction and the pillaging and all of the looting and all of the destruction? I really feel bad for the people who live in the areas that were burnt because they couldn't even go to the grocery store anymore. I heard horror stories of, of people who live downtown and they, they had no way to get anything because they don't have vehicles. That's just the walking distance. That's what you do in the city. Yep. Yeah, it's carjackings are way up. They have more crime, more killings than they've had in the last 15 years. And the uh, police officers are, are down by a, no, the number of 143. Wow. And, and that's going to be in part because they're leaving, because who the hell would want to work in a city that, that declares that they don't want them there? You know, fine, you don't want me here, I'll go somewhere well, else. Well, and how about carjackings? Like, you're going to want to live in a place where that's commonplace? I can't fathom. There's got to be a major outflux going on from Minneapolis to elsewhere right now. I mean, I know that that was shortly after the riots that people probably said, nobody, nope, not going to live here anymore. And I suspect that that was part of the, you know, outflux of people at that point. But I just can't even imagine <laughs> wanting to live in, a, in, a, in an area where you know, oh, by the way, you're going to have to be really careful of carjackings. I mean, right. yeah. So the city council is, is off their rocker, and they're trying to move millions of dollars out of the police department's uh, funding. To? To, uh, remind me. Well, I don't know where they're going to they're going to put well, it. They're talking about. Oh, I know. They're 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 doing uh, things like education. Oh yes. Uh, trying to curb domestic oh, violence. Was, trying to curb. That's right. It was all it's, about. It's a behavioral stuff. Yes, we need but, to educate people better. Right. Right. And, and so they're pulling it out of officer salaries, which is going to be entirely getting rid of overtime for the officers. But the problem is when you have all of the police officers leaving the force, right. the ones that are remaining have to ha be in overtime, or they can't respond to exactly. calls. Exactly. The people in the in the more questionable neighborhoods know that the police officers can't respond to the Won't calls. Won't even be coming. So they're, 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 that's the reason for the increase in crime. Right. 
So the, the, the majority of the funding to the police department is specifically for salaries. So all they're doing is cutting the number of police and the number of hours that can be worked. All that can relate to is increased crime. Where they're transferring the monies to, which is more of the behavioral component, more of the social work component, is all wishful thinking, typical for progressives, typical for leftists. If we just love them a little bit more, they won't commit crimes. Um, and you know, maybe that's true if you can catch them when they're children, but that's not the situation now. If it were, you wouldn't be seeing an increased crime in the city. You wouldn't be seeing the increased carjackings, the increased murders. It just flies in the face of reason to me to take away the one stop gap that you would need to reduce crime. It's right. just foolhardy. I don't right. even... If... And, and Mayor, F Mayor Fry is starting to see that now. He's going to at least have to consider, I would assume that it's not even a question that he's going to veto this defunding of the police that the crazy city council people are are still <laughs> apparently in favor of. The chief, uh, Aaron Dondo, right. is pleading with the city council. He's black, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, pleading to retain the funding because the city's going to go up in flames again if we don't retain this. Well, after the council approves a budget, then it heads to Fry, who has veto power. Yes. But we shall see what he decides to do because... I don't know, if you want to squash your city and make no more people want to live there, that's probably the way to do it. I mean, just say, by the way, you're not going to be safe here. Isn't safety so important to people? I always thought that that was one of the main things that particularly women were interested in was safety. That is, that is the main th I know with me as a mom, the most important thing to me is I want to make sure, I mean, aren't you a little concerned about your daughter living there? Well, yes, absolutely. And I, I, think, I, I think this is going to come around. I think that the majority of residents in Minneapolis are not in favor of this concept. If, if they were at one point, most of them are no longer because they're seeing the results of this r moronic idea. Exactly. And I think Frey will probably veto it because I think that he's going to be hearing from more residents of the city that are saying <laughs> enough is enough. This was an interesting idea, but I don't want to get carjacked and I don't want to die. So let's move on from this crazy experiment. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to, nobody wants that. So, so next we will be back and we will talk to you a little bit about mailbag and we've got a little different twist on it, just a little bit different when we come back. Central 4800. 4800, go ahead. Requesting social services on call team. Stand by. 4800 social services requesting additional information. You can advise social services that we have an 18 month old female who was in a residence with a mother now being transported to medical care for overdose. Trusting your digital life to faceless tech giants can be risky. Will they keep your family and business information truly safe from prying eyes? If you subscribe to local Beck Lightband Internet Service, you already have Beck Cloud Backup. Beck Cloud Backup is the safest, most private cloud storage for all your family memories, schoolwork, and business documents. Call 701-475-2361 to start using your free space on Beck Cloud Backup today. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. 
Today's households have more digital devices than ever before. More links to family, business, education, and entertainment. Beck Communications spent over 10 years building North Dakota's fastest fiber optic internet service. Beck Lightband Internet, outpacing speeds in large cities nationwide. Lightband Internet handles all your digital needs without throttling your connection to the world. Beck Communications, valuable digital connections in rural North Dakota. Howdy folks, it's the Cantaline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at our salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Cantaline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattling pie with a calm roll that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. It is time for Mail Bag. Now, Lori, I gotta ask you. Okay. It's a new show. Right. We're gonna have Mail Bag occasionally. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been thinking of a couple of ways we could introduce Mail Bag. Okay. Now, do you remember Blue's Clues? Absolutely, okay. I love it's Blue's Clues. It's something about like, <laughs> Mail Bag. <laughs> right. So, we c I was thinking, okay, that's option one. Okay. There's other choices? Okay. There's, I, there's option two. Okay. The uh, option two is like Polly D. I don't know Polly D. Mel Big's here. <laughs> Mel Big's okay. here. Okay, that's helpful. <laughs> do you think we should do one of those? I don't know, neither. Um, actually, <laughs> Mailbag. Actually, that sounds a lot like Steve on Blue's Clues. I like that, though. Uh, mailbag is our attempt to communicate back after you have communicated with us in some form. And I like it because it's a little back and forth, and I like it because People are going to, you know, obviously excoriate us and obviously say mean things, but you know, sometimes they're kind. And so tonight we're kind of doing the flip side from what we have done previously with Mailbag, just giving you the other side of the story, if you will. So we're gonna knock them up here on the top and put them on the screen, there we go. All right, so our first one here, we've got three different comments and, and I love this because they're complimentary. Karen says, you work well together, which I really like to hear because we're new and it's hard to know if you're gonna gel with someone. I mean, you gotta be on, didn't you think too the same thing? You were like, hmm, I wonder how this is gonna uh, go. Yeah, I thought you were gonna completely dominate me and I wasn't <laughs> gonna get a word in edgewise. No way, you did not. Maybe a little bit, I No, guess. and um, then I like Angie and Troy because uh, Angie says, or Troy, whomever you are, says, I am loving this show so far, and that makes my heart happy. And then, if you look at the third one, it says, thanks for sharing, Ginny, which means somebody shared the show with somebody else. So I would recommend that you go and do that. Share it with somebody else, because if you really like it, chances are your friend down the line probably likes it too. So the next one says, I really appreciate you starting this show. It's refreshing to hear a practical and honest opinion to the current issues at hand. Thank you for standing up and going against popular opinion and for speaking the truth and facts. Wow, nailed nice. it. Mm -hmm. Somebody's been listening. Uh, keep it up. I, for one, am thankful we live in a country that we can share our opinions, facts, and truth freely. Amen to that. I'm right with you, Virginia. For those who disagree with you, they also have the same right to watch something else. Keep up the good work. So thank you, Virginia Weber. That was very kind, and and I agree with everything she said. Well, kind of. I, I but I think the people who disagree with us sh should still watch. Absolutely, no question. <laughs> <laughs> There's no question about that, and and comment as well. I mean, I'm good with that sure. because seriously, I'm good with dissent. If you if you feel like we are obnoxious, and then you know, tell us. If I didn't have haters, I would be lost. <laughs> I wouldn't know Who what to do. Who are you? Yeah. No haters. So, uh, this next one is from Julie, and Julie says, I listened to this, waiting for the next one. So she's apparently not watching, just listening to our words, which I would highly recommend. Sometimes you need to just turn off the visual to concentrate on what the topic is at hand. She's probably listening to us doing a Zoom call yes, right. at the same time, and listening. multitasking. That's that very not possible. Not listening to the Zoom call. Entirely possible. Now moving on, um, Wendy says, I'd never heard of this show. Someone sent me a video and I really like it. Another share post, which I would highly recommend. I just think that's, I know that if I see something that's really good and it's new and it's great, I'm absolutely gonna share it with my friends. And I 
a lot of my friends love to share videos with me. And just a pro tip on that one too, if you're gonna send me a video, it needs to be a clip and not the whole hour and a half thing because I'm not gonna probably have mm -hmm. time to watch the whole thing. So what I've been kind of telling my friends is, Give me the synopsis. If it's, a, if it's an hour and a half video that you want me to watch and you want me to see what it, it's all about, give me the breakdown in short form so I can know what it's all about rather than giving me the whole yeah. thing. If, if I had friends, I would definitely share the show. <laughs> Friends, I would, there's no doubt I would share the show. He only has haters, people, so that's that is problem. No, I think it's it's helpful to share it with people, especially if you if there's something that you really like. So this next one we're going to here has a number of different comments. These were made before we even started the show, and I included oh. them because I thought it would be interesting to see what people were thinking of, and they had only seen the you know the picture of us on the open or mm -hmm. on the Facebook page. And so people really didn't even know anything about what the program was. And this showed me something new in that I thought, okay, people are anticipatory. They're, they're looking forward to something new and different. And we had a very short description on the show. So mm -hmm. I don't know how you could infer all that much from it. Now I am dominating and talking over you and talking more than- That's good, because- <laughs> But I like, to. I, to like, I like the fact that people are excited about us even starting this type of, of a program. We thought it would be cool. We thought it would be a good idea. Yeah, um, you bet. I, I, I think any time you can get out of the typical or stereotypical mainstream media type thing, have a show with real people discussing real issues in this area, um, I, I think that, that that adds value. Now, whether other people think it adds value, we will find out, but so far I feel I feel pretty good about it. I do too. Well, I love the fact that they said that it's exciting, looking forward to this, great picture of us too, and uh, a great combination. I think that we're a great combination because you and I have a lot in common and we have a lot that is absolutely not in common. So, all right, and then this last one says, Cameron kind of sums it all up and says, a breath of fresh air, the truth should not be a novelty. Best wishes for the show. I like that. Thank the you, truth Cameron. Should not be a, a novelty. novelty. It should it should not be the unusual thing. It should be the regular thing. And in news and in television nowadays, yeah, truth is not always. No. So if we were the odd couple, I I guess <laughs> I you would, would obviously Felix have Unger. to be Felix, yeah, and I would be. Is it Oliver? What's the guy's name? I don't name? remember. I don't remember the other guy. I just remember Felix. Except Unger. he was kind of dirty. Right. I'm not dirty. But I am a little more, maybe, casual. Yeah, you're a little more casual. All right. I'm a little more buttoned up. That's true. Ah, <sighs> Thanks for joining us for Mailbag. <laughs> we'll be uh, back. We are going to be back. Yes, join us one minute or two. You just might find the home of your dreams this weekend by watching the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes Sundays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 on Beck. Featuring properties from Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, and surrounding areas, the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes presents desirable properties that are for sale, lets you meet your Alliance Realtors, and provides critical insights into local happenings from community and business leaders. Join us this Sunday evening at 6 or Wednesday at 7 for the Alliance Real Estate Tour of Homes on Beck. He once won a spelling bee in an ancient language that he did not speak. He is the only man to ever earn extra credit on an IQ exam. His academic degrees are considered legitimate spending currency in 22 nations, two principalities, and at Chick-fil-A restaurants in the United States and Western Canada. I do not always engage with education programming, but when I do, it is The Dr. Duke Show. Stay educated with The Dr. Duke Show, weekdays at 4 p.m. on Beck News. Howdy folks, it's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you're due for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill at a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattle and pie with a combo that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. 
Introducing Accord Comfort Sleep Systems, a better way to sleep. We offer you five different models to give you the perfect choice of support and body comfort. Every model begins with our exclusive Accord Comfort Reflex Layer. This ensures proper spinal alignment and a deep down body relief. Our 8-inch Whisper Breeze provides a medium firm feel and our 10-inch Gentle Night model has a quilted top giving you a medium plush comfort. Both use Outlast fabric on the top of your mattress, ensuring that your body temperature is not too hot and not too cold. Our Copper Rest Sleep Series is our premier mattress, offering your choice of firm, plush, and luxury plush. Every model uses copper-infused gel latex and provides all the health benefits of copper. Accord Comfort mattresses are handcrafted in the USA and come with a 60-night sleep guarantee. You're going to love sleeping with us. Order today exclusively at AccordSleep.com or Tom's Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Harvey. Capital City Restaurant Supply is your one-stop shop for quality restaurant products for the large to small kitchens. Commercial grade restaurant and bar supplies, limb game processing equipment, refrigeration, dinnerware, and smallware. We sell everything including the kitchen sink for trusted manufacturers for the chef and all of us. Open to the public since 1971, we are veteran owned and North Dakota proud. Let us take care of your restaurant and home kitchen needs today by visiting us at 1414 Interstate Loop in Bismarck or on the web at CapitalCityRestaurantSupply.com. Welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. That was a fun mailbag. It was. <laughs> and, uh, but we're moving on to a new topic, and it is about Well, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about getting into politics, because people have asked me recently, too, they said, you know, you, why did you even want to get into politics? I mean, why would you want to get And why do people not want to get into politics? Right. And because probably the position you hold. Right. It's I'm a national committee woman. So I am a national I am the national committee woman for the state of North Dakota currently. I was just elected by um, by a paper ballot in April. And so I just um, started I was seated at the end of August, at the end of the mm -hmm. national convention, and that's when you get seated. And so I am just brand new in this position. But this is the first time I've ever run for any office, and it was a pretty substantial office to run for right off the bat. And so it took a lot of soul searching. Mm -hmm. It took a lot of wondering. I knew that I always wanted to do some sort of public service. Didn't really know where I fit in that, where what was going to be right for me or what was going to be right for the position and, and if I would fit into that position. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think it's a, a really good fit, actually, and I'm very much enjoying it. Um, now, in your case, you ran for the legislature in what year? 2012. 12? Okay. So, so for the 13th session. For right. the 13th session. Right. So, I mean, no one really wants to get into politics now because there are so many things yeah. that are bad about it. Um, people are worried about the commitment. They're worried about the, the time commitment. They're worried about the money commitment, especially. That's, I mean, it's, it's really expensive right. to run for office. And then, then there's, there's the fear of people going into your past and wondering, you know, if people are going to dig up skeletons or things about you or your family, which is horrible. There's, um, it's a, it's a really big decision and it's a really big leap and you have to think about it in, in a pragmatic way, but you also have to look at it real logically as well. Right. The, the, I, I think there are a lot of barriers. The first one is just even the concept of, is this something available to me? Is this something I should do? Because, you know, you go along and you think about, well, they should do something. Right, right. right. And, and that's, that's how it was for me back in 2012. And actually in 2010, I was starting to think about, should I look at something else? Because, um, I mean, gosh, my, my plastic surgery practice was going great. My kids were getting older. And I was just starting to think about what else might there be. And, and I listened to an interesting speech by uh, Stephen Jobs, and I was listening to Glenn Beck, and it was interesting. He had he was like talking to me uh, through the radio, saying, "You know, what are you going to do with your life? What do you want your life to be about?" And I start, so I'm like, maybe I should, maybe <laughs> I should do something more. And so sometimes you get that little calling, and uh, and and you want to go out and do it. So the the thing is that. There are so many opportunities. We see opportunities for legislative seats all the time. Right. There are opportunities for city and county commission Absolutely. seats. Absolutely. School and, boards. And, and um, these opportunities come up, and, and we can't find people. Right. 
we can't find people. And so you brought up the question of what are the barriers? And it's one of the barriers is I don't, I don't know what I need to know to get in. I, I don't have the knowledge to do the job properly. Right. And that's, that's not the case. You learn as you go. That's true. You, if you're a North Dakota citizen and you want to use common sense and you care about the state, that's enough. That's all you need to know. I love this because it's really encouraging. And this is one of my main goals as a national committee woman is to get more people involved who have been thinking about that, that, ha that little niggling idea in the back of your head's like, you know what, I know that I could do this and I could probably do it better than that legislator who's there. And why is it that I'm not getting involved? And I wanna encourage you to think about actually starting and getting your feet wet. And I know there are some people in like the food freedom area who are mm -hmm. just starting to be vocal about, and I love that so much because what that means is, is that people are thinking about ways that they can affect change. And I think that, that if you even have that thought in your head, you should definitely go for it and pursue that and at least do some investigating before you run for office. Right. Now, you mentioned money. I don't think money is a big Barrier. is a big barrier. I, I think that people may think it is, mm -hmm. but I don't actually think it is. But I think you're right. Perception-wise, I think people perceive it yes. as a problem. Yes. So. Now, you have to be willing to do something. This is the number one concern, I think. When Once you start looking into it, mm -hmm. the thing that pulls people uh, back to, to be a little bit questioning on it is that you do have to raise some money. You have to actually ask people for money. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's difficult. You hate it. You hate to do it. But the thing is, you, you go to your friends and you go to your family members and you say, hey, I'm thinking of doing this. And they'll support you. And then from there you branch out to people in your neighborhood or your church or beyond that, your place of work to say, here's what I'm thinking of doing. I want to make a difference in this way. These are the people that know you. Right. They'll support you. It doesn't take too much to be able to run for an office, especially some of these opportunities that come up where there's not even any opposition. Well, and that's, that was my next point, is that if you are, do you have to have super thick skin to do this? Do you have to have a hard shell? Do you have to, you know, have the intestinal fortitude to get through tough times and things like that? Yeah, probably there are going to be things that are going to be tough and that are going to be more difficult, but look at how many opportunities you have for making a big difference, too. And it's a, it's a big leap. You have to take a, you know, you have to, view it as a sacrifice. I think I view this as a bit of a sacrifice for your community and your country. I'm gonna take those slings and arrows yep. and it's not gonna bother me because it's the bigger picture. And sometimes people think, well, I'm not gonna make a difference anyway. Yeah. But I tell you what, you can make a difference and you may make a difference. Exactly. If you don't try, then you are guaranteed you won't make a difference. That's right, that's right. That, that's the guarantee. That's right. So you wanna look back on your life and say, I made a difference. I tried to make, I did my very, very best to make the world a better place for my kids and my grandkids and my friends, my neighbors, and so forth. So All right. with that, let's call it. All right. Next um, up. We're going to talk about Ken Paxton and the lawsuit in Texas and also about Burgum's budget on the next. No apologies. And next on Beck, we've got No Filter with Debbie. <laughs>